Hi folks, welcome to the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy Railroad and the Chicago and Northwestern Railway in Wyoming. Today is October 3rd, 2024 and this is layout update number 59. I'm Mark Pruitt, Grable Hostler. Well, September didn't seem like a very productive month. I worked steadily all month, just didn't seem like I got much done. I only did one of the three things I mentioned at the end of last month's update, so let's start there. I said I might re-letter Milwaukee Road number 362 for the Burlington, and I did. This is now Burlington locomotive number 5263, an O2A class Mikado. It's on the track and ready to go. Switching over to the staging yard for a few minutes, we left off here last month. The monitors for the yard were mounted on the fascia, but the second camera, which is supposed to look at the center set of occupancy detectors, wasn't yet installed. On the 7th of September, I was ready to put the camera in. I'd played around with its positioning and lighting for a couple of days and selected the best location. I mounted the camera on a scrap of plywood to make mounting it under the layout easier. Here's where the camera and light are mounted. You can see that it's pretty tight quarters under here. And here's the final configuration of the control station. The left monitor is a view looking at the west yard throat towards the yard, and the monitor to the right looks back the other direction at the center of the yard with the occupancy detectors just below the center of the screen. A finishing touch was attaching the panel to a cutting board I painted bronze green. This provides more stability for the panel than just sitting it on the wire rack and also provides a spot for pens and pencils. The yard is ready to use at the next operating session. The second week in September, while I was sitting at the workbench scrubbing the Milwaukee lettering off the Mikado, I was looking at the Thermopolis benchwork right in front of my face and realized that, with the turntable in place, it was ready for fascia. I had some masonite out in the garage just waiting to be put to use, so I grabbed a strip and clamped it in place. I marked it roughly to size and took it back to the garage to cut it. Since the turntable extends out past the benchwork a bit, I installed a 2x4 where it protrudes the most to provide support for the fascia panel and keep any pressure off the turntable frame. Turned out the 2x4 was exactly the right size. Once the turntable block was in place, I clamped the fascia panel back up to check the fit and to install the fasteners. Now that I knew exactly where the fascia went, I marked it and final cut it to size. In this shot, I haven't trimmed the large panel at the end of the peninsula yet. The big fascia panels on the end of the peninsula have looked like this since I installed them in late 2023. Since I was cutting and installing the Thermopolis fascia, I decided to just do the whole job, paint all the fascia panels that have been installed, including the new ones at Thermopolis. So I removed the big panels at the end of the peninsula and got started. On September 14th, I painted the first of the big panels. It got two coats, then the next day I moved to the next panel. I allowed each panel a couple days to dry and begin hardening before reinstalling them. On the 17th, the big panels were reinstalled, and on the 18th, I installed the two new Thermopolis panels. Now came time to mount the turntable controller. I took a sheet of O20 styrene and cut it out with a hole that the controller barely fits into when the back of the controller is removed. After painting the styrene a light gray, I fitted it to the faceplate and reinstalled the back. Then I installed the entire thing into the fascia. I had all the signs, the throttle port, the drink holder, and all that stuff temporarily installed on the benchwork, but of course I had to remove them when I put the new fascia up. Now it was time to reinstall them. Everything went back up just fine except for the throttle pocket. When it was mounted to the benchwork, it extended below the bottom, so I only installed the top two screws. I did this everywhere the pockets were installed on the benchwork. 
I knew I'd need the extra screws someday, so I put them in a little container and put it away so I knew where they were. I spent two whole days looking for them. Finally, after going through all the shelves and boxes in the train room and the storeroom, I went to the refrigerator to get a drink. Sitting right there on top of it was that container of screws. I hope I'm not the only one who does this kind of stuff. It wasn't all bad, though. Everything's a lot more organized than it was when I started looking. A few days after I finished the fascia, I decided to just keep going with Thermopolis and paint the track. I removed everything on the benchwork in preparation. Then I covered the new fascia, the turnout ground throws, and the turntable pit to protect them from overspray and got to work. In the foreground of this picture, you can see the Rust-Oleum spray paint I use on the track. With just a few minutes work with the spray can, I wound up with this. Track was painted all the way down past the curve at the far end. I wiped the top of the rails with a few scrap bits of cork road bed while the paint was still mostly wet. Then later, I took a single-edged razor blade and dragged it along the tops of the rails. Finally, I cleaned up what little paint was left with a bright boy. Then I removed all the tape, protecting everything from overspray. The last couple of days, I've spent filling gaps between the Thermopolis skyboard panels and painting them. The skyboard is now painted all the way around to the east end of Worland, near Holly Sugar. Next step here will be installation of the backdrop. That may be a few months, since I still have to create it. I took the photos I need almost two and a half years ago, but I may need to get newer, higher resolution photos to make a good backdrop. This is one of two possible views I have on hand. The second one is the one that will have to be reshot. Meanwhile, everything is back in Thermopolis for the upcoming operating session. The last thing for this month was temporarily installing a model of this tunnel portal in the Wind River Canyon. Pardon this poor resolution photo, it's the best one I've got. I scratch built this tunnel portal many years ago. It fell apart and I kept it in a box for decades, and I'm not kidding about that. But in mid-2022, I dug out the box and reassembled the portal. Here, in April, I was in the midst of reassembling it. Once reassembled and modified, I used it to help set clearances for the foam tunnels in the Wind River Canyon. Other than that, it's just sort of bounced around the Powder River to Wind River Canyon part of the layout, getting in the way and trying to get itself smashed to pieces again. For most of the past year, it's set on the upper level benchwork at Riverton, watching fascia get installed, rock work in the canyon, operating sessions, and so on. For the past several months, it's been amused by my fumbling construction of the staging yard. Until about September 25th. On that day, I took the portal down because I decided it was time to do some further work on it in preparation for installation at the west end of Black Tunnel, the first tunnel in the Wind River Canyon on the route from Casper to Thermopolis. I trimmed off the inside set of braces for the portal next to the rock faces, then I cut away some of the rocks to make the portal fit into the opening, and after a couple hours work, it fit pretty well. This is how it looks at this point. I need to remove the outer set of braces like I did the inner ones and touch up the wood stain on the new cuts. Then I have to build three or four similar portals for the remaining tunnels in the canyon. And that was it for the month of September. I'm not sure I'll get much done on the layout this month. I have an operating session coming up on October 22nd and I'm going to be spending a lot of time creating custom loads and routes in Operations Pro in JMRI to improve the realism of traffic flows on the layout. For example, right now the program simply moves some tank cars back and forth between Casper Yard and the standard oil refinery. I'm going to adjust it so that doesn't happen, but it's a pretty involved process. With what time I'll have outside of preparing for the session, 
I may work a bit more on the canyon rock faces and the tunnel portal. I may also try to get started on some structures. Who knows? You'll have to tune in next month to find out. And all of that, of course, probably means I'll do something completely off in left field instead. As usual, the Cronkite segment follows right after this closing. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next month. In the Cronkite segment two months ago, I talked about how, in 2002, I began work on my new version of the cb and in Wyoming. First, I had to plan the new layout. That took about six months. This layout, at 30 feet by 29 feet, was planned to fill the basement of our new home in Merchantville, New Jersey. It was a double-deck layout, with the decks to be connected by a giant four-track helix. The first little bit of construction was done in late 2002, but work didn't begin in earnest until the last half of 2003. By October of that year, new benchwork was being constructed. Later that month, the Seattle staging yard was being laid, um, if you can see it through all that mess. By the end of the year, staging tracks were being extended out of Seattle towards the Minneapolis staging yard. Construction was genuinely underway. And by the way, every freight car I had that was operational at that time was on this train. And that's the way it was, 2003.